Hi, I'm Lauren from Giorgio Drawers and today I'm going to be sharing my favourite calligraphy supplies. So today I'm going to talk you through some of my favourite calligraphy supplies. Um, I need to say that I'm not an expert calligrapher. This is something that I do as a hobby and I find it fun and enjoyable. So these are just my personal favourite supplies that have got me here this far on my calligraphy journey. So I'm going to start off with the most important thing, the nib. And the nib that I like to use the most is called a Nico G calligraphy nib. And it's just been popped into a straight nib holder. So there are two types of holders. So there's a straight nib like this one here. And there is also the oblique version, which holds your nib on the side like this. And it's great for helping to create an angle while you're writing. I prefer to use the straight nib because I'm left-handed, so I already naturally write on a bit of a slant. So it's something to just experiment with. So that's my nib and my holder. I'm also going to be using a Rhodia pad today. So this was one of the first things that I bought along with my nib. This pad is designed for calligraphy work. You can see here some of my rough doodles when I was first experimenting and it's super super smooth paper so when you're writing the nib isn't going to catch on the paper because it's really really smooth you can just pull and push the nib without any problems it's great for when you're learning as well because you can move on to harder textures once you've gotten the hang of it so we're going to be writing on our rhodia pad with our nico g nib and I'm going to start with Sumi ink. This is professional calligraphy ink. It's a, I think it's Japanese, it's either Chinese or Japanese. And it's designed, it was designed for manga drawing. So it helps with creating really fine lines and also really thick, opaque ink. Okay, so for this I can dip straight into the ink. It doesn't need mixing. And I'm just loading up the nib completely and then brushing away any excess. And I'm going to tilt my paper because, as I mentioned, I'm left handed and it's helpful for me. I do a little test, pull and a push. Perfect. And I'm just going to write one of my dog's names because why not? Okay, so it's not my best work and pretty rusty, but you can see here just how opaque this ink is and how thin these lines have become. It's really easy to create that depth with this nib and this ink. So just as another example here, you can see that I'm not even pulling, I'm just like very gently guiding the nib and then to pull down we can create really thick strokes and that's down to your nib so if you wanted to create calligraphy that had um, less of it was more thin uh, more delicate then you would be looking at a different nib but this nib is perfect for beginners because it takes pressure quite well so if you're learning how to apply the right amount of pressure you can do this with this nib without worrying about breaking it okay so I'm gonna give my nib a quick clean I'm just wetting it and then wiping it down with a tissue. And we're good to go again. Don't roll in it. So that's what our calligraphy looks like with professional ink. So what would it look like if we used a different ink? 
This is Winter and Newton ink and I'm using Ultramarine today. So this is just specified as ink. We It's not necessarily calligraphy based, um, but it should work in the same manner. So the only difference may be that it might be slightly runnier. And we'll find out. So I'm starting again with a test. So it's much, much runnier. You can see there how quickly I ran out of ink. I'm going to use a brush just to make sure that it's not me. So I'm going to pick up plenty of ink and drop it on there. Yeah, this ink is crazy. This is on professional paper and it's bleeding like mad. Uh, it's dripping off the end of the, the nib. So I would say no to any ink that isn't calligraphy based ink. So that one out of the way. We're gonna move on to watercolor. So after what you've just seen, I can imagine that you'd be quite skeptical about watercolors. The good news is that they work really, really well with calligraphy nibs. They're great because you are controlling how thick or thin the liquid is. So with a nib, it's ideal if you can get it to this slightly thicker than uh, ink, like thin ink or water. So you're looking for more of a cream consistency. So this is something that we can control with a brush and our watercolour. So I'm just using a brush, I'm just brushing the back of the nib again. Let's see how this goes. What a difference! That's amazing. So that's just, that is the perfect consistency. Can you see that drag that I'm getting every time? I think there's something in the nib. There is, there's a hair in the nib. If you get anything in the nib, it will thicken those thin upstrokes because something is pushing the nib open. Um, it's, they're called teens, but I don't know why. Let's try that. Oh, that's so much better. It's one of the things with calligraphy is you will learn to, you'll get accustomed with the nib and with the ink and when something's wrong, it, it just shouts about it. It's so easy to tell. Okay. Last but not least, I'm just gonna show you how I do some of my more glitzy calligraphy. So I use a product called Fine Tech. This stuff is amazing. It's really good value for money and you can buy all of these individually as well. So they're about, in the UK, I think they're about two pound per pan. And the color is so intense, it's so glam and glitzy. It's just perfect. So I'm using a brush again. We've got a clean nib, clean brush, and I'm gonna do bronze. So again, I'm looking for that cream, like double cream consistency.
And that's it. So those are some of my favourite supplies. The only other thing I would have to mention is that when you're developing your calligraphy skills, you will inevitably develop your own calligraphy style. Mine is somewhere between handwriting and modern calligraphy. Um, I'm happy with that, that's how I like it, but there are a million different ways of practicing this art form. So when I was first learning and first getting used to calligraphy, I bought a book and I would highly recommend this book. It's called Modern Calligraphy and it's by Molly Superthorpe and it's just a perfect kind of bible of everything that you would need to know to get started and something that I wanted to show you as well is mine's very battered but you can see that you have all of these different lettering styles to practice hang on there we go so you can practice the same letter a million different ways. It doesn't matter whether you want to learn to write modern calligraphy or something really copper plate and intricate, you can do that either way. So I would definitely have a look, have a research into your favorite calligraphers and find out how they are learning. There are loads and loads of sheets that you can download online as well that are a lot of the time free. So that's it from me. I hope that this has been useful for you and if you have any questions at all about anything that I've mentioned or haven't mentioned, let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe and there'll be plenty more soon. Enjoy, happy calligraphing!